happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. What does the brain look like when you cut open a skull? Oh, it's very soft. It's, uh, it's like che- cheesy, not, not cheesy. Yeah, sort of very soft, like a Scrambled sponge. Egg. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that <laughs> describes it well. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, not bridge. really, but it's well structured. It's not pieces, it's like beautiful. It's not, you know, it's, it's not pieces. It's, it's smooth, but it's soft. You know, it's very soft. So when you have to go through it to reach tumors and all, it's very soft. You have to cut through the surface to reach tumors. Yeah, you have to cut so you have to find an area that where you don't do much damage and you have to go through that and get to the tumor. What is happening to the human's consciousness who's undergoing like surgery like that? Say if that same part that you have cut hmm. stores the face and name of his or her mother. Hmm. You're cutting through that memory hmm. Hmm. to get through to that tumor? Uh so we try to avoid areas which are what are called eloquent. You know, there, there, are, there are some parts of the brain that we we believe aren't that important. Okay, but you're right. Everything you go through, it's not just whether memory is stored there or not. You may be going through an area that is connecting A and B. Okay, and when you when you cut through that, you you know, it's possible that you may lose some of that. It's possible. Lose what? Some aspects of your memory. Some aspects wow. of your, you know, you could. I mean, not always. And you never know because, you know, the the main memory will continue. You know, people after tumor surgery are living normal lives and everything else. But we don't know what they've lost inside. Do they know what they've lost inside? Probably Even not. They will not know. Because <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. Then. Yeah, well, you don't know what you don't know. So, have you seen someone's personality change after brain surgery? Uh, yes, they do. Like what? Uh, change. You know, very often family people say that the person is different. You know, they just say they're different now. The person who is, uh, especially we notice this after accident accidents. You know, we have a lot of because uh, uh, I, I devoted a significant chunk of my life working at the Sion Hospital, LTMG Hospital. And there we get the la- used to get the largest number of accident patients, and uh, people do tell us that uh, you know, even if you save their life, the person is different afterwards. They just say different, you know. <laughs> but like what? Like you mean less talkative? You no, it's, diff- it's different for everyone. So yeah. it could be even like angrier. Yeah. In fact, that happens more often. Yeah. Really? Like someone becomes angrier usually yeah, after they, brain they, surgery? They, they, uh, not always. I mean, not always. Uh, but the thing, they, they're different. For example, they may be a little more reactive. They may be a little more less tolerant. They may be, they may be quieter sometimes. So... Each patient is different. And, um, you know, this has to be, but, you know, as far as we are concerned, when somebody has a tumor that's going to kill them, you just, you remove the tumor, you save their life. And as surgeons, we sort of, well, we saved your life, okay? And then, unfortunately, overall, our medical system is not structured to go into these aspects. You save somebody's life, that's it, okay? Now, you know, you go home and take your radiation, chemo, whatever else. And But, uh, yeah, these things do happen. These things do happen and... Conversely, pre-surgery, when someone's just starting to develop a brain tumor, uh, what effect does it have on that person's mind? It depends on which part of the brain. So we have a, we have, you know, we have a frontal, there's something called the frontal lobe. We have a parietal lobe. We have an occipital lobe. We have different lobes of the brain. Each lobe has got different functions. So depending on where the tumor is, uh, people will have different symptoms. Like maybe your hearing goes away, your eyesight goes yeah, away exactly. suddenly. So we have a tumor at the small part of the brain called acoustic neuroma. So there the hearing goes away first. And uh, if your tumor is in the front part of the brain, then it will affect your personality, you know. Like what's uh, the worst case of personality switch, switches you've seen because of a tumor? Uh, many, you know. I mean like completely different. It's so varied, no? It's so completely varied from uh, uh, some people develop like obsessive compulsive neuro. I mean they're they've come to us with psychiatric very, very often you know these patients are with a psychiatrist who with psychiatric disorders and they do a scan and they find a tumor um you know it could be just causing depression it could be causing abnormal behavior there's so many things that may be happening not just in the mind even physically you can have a weakness of the hands and legs you could have vision going uh, if it's in the front part you could have loss of smell so they're like different combinations of what brain tumors can do damn loss of smell yeah. something you don't Truly associate with the brain. You associate always with your nose. nose and yeah. what, what else have you found out about the brain after you've become a neurosurgeon that you didn't know? Uh, yeah, that the brain has tremendous, um, it has got plasticity. 
you know, it so can change. You know, it can change. So we've seen people with severe damage, severe damage uh, recover, you know, uh, and this is something I, uh, I've specially focused on. So earlier I used to work with patients who had gone into deep coma after head injury. And then we tried uh, to first stimulate them with uh, something called uh, stim- you know, neurostimulation. We used to put electrodes into their cervical spine. And then there's a pacemaker. We would continuously give electric currents. And um, you know this would give electric. So these are people in coma. Okay, um, So we tried that. We didn't get very good results. We got some results, but not very good results. And the, you know that apparatus was very expensive. It was This is something developed in Japan called dorsal column stimulation. Uh, but now with my current speciality of uh, cell stroke stem cell therapy, we found some amazing improvements. We've got this uh, this kid, I mean, he's just, you know, the most phenomenal story. This, he was like, what, uh, 22 years old and he was a shippy working in a ship, 22, 23. And he was on a height somewhere and he fell down. And then he went into, he fell and was in deep coma. Complete, totally non-responsive. Totally. What is the biology of going into a coma because of a fall? Uh, the, the All of the brain gets damaged, but especially the, you know, the, there's a lower part of the brain called the brain stem that is responsible for our consciousness, for our awakefulness. Your medulla so, longer? Uh, yeah, exactly. The medulla. You know, you know about the brain. So the okay. medulla and the pons and the midbrain, these are called the brain stem. So when the medulla is damaged, you lose consciousness because there is something inside that called the reticular formation. And I shouldn't get too technical no, about we'll this. No, get technical. <laughs> what, what is it? The reticular formation. So in the brains, in the medulla, there is a network called the reticular formation. And this is responsible for us being awake or not being awake. So when you sleep, your reticular formation switches off. When you awake, your reticular, it's like the switch to keep you awake. Now it's permanently damaged, you go into a coma. That's like a permanent sleep. So anyway, this kid who's so they went all over. They went to all the hospitals in Mumbai. They tried all the treatments. And then for about a year, this kid was completely in coma. And then they came to me. And everybody had told them nothing can be done. And then we, I did uh, cell therapy for him, stem cell therapy, along with hyperbaric oxygen. We gave him deep oxygen therapy, ozone. But but his uh, reticular... It's completely gone. Okay. Fired. He was in coma, complete. No what responsiveness. Mean, what do you mean fired? Inflamed? No, damaged. Damage. I mean, like physically broken. damaged. Yeah, whatever. You know, the... So... And... Um, we worked, and of course, I have to give credit to his father and uncle. They're two people who gave up everything. This kid is from Lucknow, and he came to us, and day and night they worked on him. Day and night they worked on him. And we gave him cell therapy a couple of times. We gave him oxygen-based therapies, hyperbaric. We gave him ozone therapy. We did a lot of physiotherapy. And over a period of almost a year, this guy has become fully conscious now. He's fully conscious. He's talking. He's reading. He's, you know, uh, ambulatory. I mean, this is... It's, you know, this is what happened to Michael Shoemaker. You know, Michael Shoemaker, the driver, you know, he actually had a similar fall and he was, uh, but that unfortunately happened 10 years ago. So I don't think we can help him. He's now. still in a coma. He's right? still in a coma. Skiing accident. Skiing accident, yeah. But a similar thing with this guy, we've got him out. Okay, this is this is miraculous. This is the power of cell and stem cell therapy to be able to recover the damaged brain, which was unthinkable. And, you know, the story you should... Somebody will actually do a story on just their life. I mean, this is a story of grit, determination, not giving up. The whole world tells you, you cannot save your son, but you do not give up. You know? And then, they, you know, they found us. We And uh, after some time, the company stopped, uh, you know, the treatment was to be paid by the shipping company and they stopped paying. And, you know, but we continued to treat him. We said, okay, do, doesn't matter. You know, we will not, we'll not take anything from you, but I, I'm going to make this guy, you know, get back. And he is today. You know, if you, uh, he's, he, he, I just, yesterday they sent me a video of him, you know, sitting up and talking and everything else. So it's what was earlier believed to be impossible is now possible using cell therapy. What did he say first when he woke up? Uh, he woke up over a period of time. Okay, He woke up, uh, I mean, not, he didn't wake up like one fine day. Okay. He woke up over a period of time, but now he has a full conversation. He, he remember, he knows me by name. He talks to me, you know, he asks questions he wants, you know, because he's, over the years, his hands and legs, everything have got very tight. And so he wants to know when he'll be able to walk. And, you know, he asked me those kind of intelligent questions. So but it's... What did he make of the time span that went by? Oh, he doesn't remember that, yeah. So does he, he remember the fall? No, he doesn't remember. No. 
he doesn't you know the, that part is is gone you know? imagine just waking up one day hmm. you don't even know what's happened to you and your arm but, but he knows he knows uh, so uh, so interestingly you know when you we, we so we when i talk about his future what he wants to do i actually asked him do you want to go back to the ship he clearly said i do not want to go back to the ship so he he has he knows something happened on the ship he was on the ship when he fell so he's you know he he reacts very strongly to it no i do not want to go back on the ship that means he remembers the ship and something went wrong he doesn't remember anything in between that wow okay um are you working him up to being exactly what he was this yes he will be he's exactly he's, he's, he's almost like you know 70% there and uh, he's going to get back to what he was before so if you enjoy this video subscribe to trs clips for more